We're on the line to Gadi Baltiansky, who is director of the Geneva Initiative. Gadi, we also remember you from the days of being a spokesman in the prime minister's office in the days of Prime Minister Ehud Barak. We're getting you in an interview being recorded on September 13th because it is the 23rd anniversary of that handshake on the lawn of the White House, President Clinton, Palestinian President Arafat, and Israeli Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin. Is there reason to celebrate this day 23 years later? As long as we don't have peace, we don't have a, any reason to celebrate. But we we should remember that an historic process started 23 years ago, mainly with the mutual recognition of Israel and the PLO. The, PA, the PLO, the Palestinians, recognized the state of Israel, and Israel recognized the PLO as a, a legitimate representative of the Palestinian people. Without that recognition, there wouldn't have been any chance for a genuine peace process. We've had a lot of terror as well, but we've also had the establishment of Palestinian self-rule, certainly. But on the West Bank and in the Gaza Strip, the Hamas has taken over. I mean, so much has happened, a lot of it negative, I think you'll admit. Is there a horizon? Where do we take it from here? We need to, to finish the job of those who, who did the, the Oslo, signed the Oslo Agreement. The idea of Rabin and Arafat was not to have an interim uh, a mechanism that will continue forever. And as long as it is interim, many are trying to sabotage it. There are many spoilers, uh, including uh, terrorism, which is the worst uh, way of spoiling. Including terrorism, excuse me for, inter for interviewing you and then interrupting you, but let me ask you, is Israel to blame here as well? Both sides didn't do their utmost in order to reach a, a genuine final status agreement, in order to build the necessary steps, uh, that the building stones, I would say, that are needed in order to pave the road to peace. And the Palestinians didn't fight enough. The terrorist organizations didn't do all what they should have done in order to stop and prevent terrorism. And Israel continued with the settlement policy, which is in contradiction to the notion of a two-state solution. But so instead of uh, uh, continuing with this interim arrangement of Oslo, I think both parties need to announce that Oslo is over, and then we need to go to, to, to the real thing, which is a, a peace treaty. Okay, and this is your Geneva initiative? Is that what you're talking about? What is this initiative? The Geneva initiative presents a model agreed at agreed between a mainstream, a serious, experience, experienced uh, individuals from both uh, sides, uh, people with be uh, deep and rich background in, in politics, diplomacy, security, uh, civil society. Is also government officials on the Israeli and Palestinian sides at all? On the Palestinian side, it was government officials. At the time, on the Israeli side, it is mainly former government officials, including ministers, heads of the Israeli army, head of the security agencies, the speaker of the parliament. Uh, but the notion is that we need to begin from the end. Oslo established the partners for peace, the, 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 the conditions that we recognize each other. Now we need to know wh what is the destination. Otherwise, need, none of the sides will be willing to pay the price of, of, of the trip without knowing the destination. The Geneva Initiative shows what is the area of compromise? What is the zone of a possible agreement in which both sides can live with? It's not, a, it's not a fulfillment of the dream of both sides, but it's something that doesn't violate the vital interests of both sides. What does that mean? Is it based on the 67 lines, as we like to say? It's a two-state solution uh, based on the 67 line with the majority of the Israeli settlers uh, remaining where they are, well, the, the land that they're living in will be annexed to Israel as part of a swap, uh, with a non-militarized Palestine, uh, with the, the Arab East Jerusalem as the capital of, of Palestine, with the, we, without the right of return, so-called, of Palestinian refugees to Israel, but, but with a practical solution to the problem of refugees with mutual recognition with head of conflict. I don't know another mod model besides the Geneva Initiative that describes how both sides can reach an agreement uh, even in the most detailed way. 
Be that as it may, Gotti, it does not look like when we look at the public opinion polls, when we look at the Knesset today and what bodes in the future for future Knessets in the foreseeable future, it does not look like the Israeli public is ready to buy, again, because of all the terrorism, perhaps, this kind of deal that you're talking about. So many Israelis still believe, and perhaps they're right, that the ultimate aim of the Palestinians, if they had the ability to do so, is really to do away with the state of Israel. I totally agree with you that that it looks far. It's not around, the peace is not around the corner. The question is what the alternative, what do we do in order to change the reality? If we will become hostages of our fears, then there will be no room for hope. Or, yes, I, I think that many Palestinians, if it was up to them, they would have preferred not to see any Israelis here in the region. By the way, if you ask many Israelis, they would have preferred in an ideal world not to see Palestinians as, as their neighbors. But when we wake up from our dreams, we see the reality. In the reality, there are millions of Palestinians in this piece of land, and there are millions of Jews. Now, in, in my view, the dilemma is not between a two-state solution and, and something else that doesn't exist. It's between in reaching the two-state solution before the next round of violence and bloodshed that will cost lives of, of hundreds or maybe thousands, or after it. At the end of the day, those who criticize our kind of solution I can understand the criticism. It's just that they don't have a better alternative. Mm -hmm. it, it's not a perfect solution, but it's the only one. Gadi Baltianski is director of the Geneva Initiative. Gadi, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.